Hey, welcome. This is Lance Culver, and this is going to be a tie flow tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be setting up a simple yet pretty effective automatic targeting system. This is a beginner's lesson, but there is quite a bit packed into it. So if you're new to tie flow, this should be a good one for you. So I just have a very basic sentry gun. If you want to follow along without having to create your own, there will be a link in the description. One thing you want to keep in mind is the pivots for this barrel and this top shield. They need to be aligned. I separated them here so you can see the orientation of the pivots needs to be the same. And here I have them aligned on X and Z. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and come over to create over to helpers. Select this drop down, click on tie flow. I'm going to create two tie binds. And over to Modify, down under Bind Objects for the top object, I'm going to select this small cylinder. And then for the bottom object, I'm going to select this top shield part. And I'll go ahead and align this tie bind to this cylinder here. Apply a tie bind settings. Leave all the settings at default. And increase the size of this icon. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it down 90 degrees. Now this red gizmo represents the axis on which this can rotate. If I were to come over and turn off these limits, just increase it a little bit. Now you can see that, so then this object would be able to just flop around in all directions, and that's not what I want, but these represent that. Pull that size back down. Next, I'm going to select this tie bind and align it to this tube. And then for the top object, I'm going to select the shield, and then for the bottom, I'm going to select the tube. And I'll also apply a tie bind setting to this. And then down under the twist settings, I'm going to enable limits and set the limit minimum to negative 90. Increase that size, and I'm also going to rotate that 180 degrees. So now you can see that this radius represents the limit by which this part will be able to twist. And next I'll come back over into helpers and create a tie actor. And I'm going to align it to this bottom cylinder. And then in the actor, I'm going to pick just these two tie binds. I'm also going to create a tie icon. And I'm going to create a circle. Create a tie flow and open the editor. Okay, so, first a birth operator on frame zero, just one particle. Next, an actor. I'm going to select the actor helper. Alright, next I'm going to add this X shape and physics bind. I'm going to change the display to geometry and change the bind type to tie actor binds. Next a surface test. And we'll pick this cylinder. Let's see if it's say within one centimeter. I'll drop a physics switch into a new event, switch it to kinematic and connect it to the surface test. Next, a birth operator to a new event. I'm going to say over 100 frames, birth five particles. Add a position icon and pick the tie icon. Add a shape operator. Change it to 3D and choose low res sphere. Go ahead and add a scale. So increase that to maybe 4,000 percent. All right, next a speed operator. For the direction, I'm going to choose a long icon arrow and pick the icon. 
and increase the magnitude to 15 centimeters. And I'll add a slow operator. Increase it to 10%. Next, a path follow. And pick the circle. And I'll decrease the follow velocity to maybe 0.65. And decrease the attraction velocity to something like 0.09. Let's see. And I'll decrease the spin to 0.1. Alright, so now I have a few enemies. I'll go ahead and rename this enemies. I'll rename this one Sentry Gun. Go ahead and shut off. A few things here. I'll go ahead and add a physics shape to this event here beneath the shape operator. And you'll notice the particles are falling now, and that's because the physics shape operator is adding gravity. So I'm kind of going to zero that out with a force operator. Increase the strength of it to one centimeter. Now to get this sentry gun to target these enemies, I'll need to set up simulation groups. You can select the tie flow, come down under Phys X and enable a few of these simulation groups. All right, so now I can drop a particle groups operator into these events here. I'm going to place the actor on group 2 and the enemies on group 1. So now I can put a set target operator in the center gun event and change it to proximity. Under target filters, enable simulation group 1. And then down under proximity, change it to absolute closest. So now what that's doing is it's telling the particles here to only target other particles if they're on simulation group 1 and then to only target the absolute closest. So then I could add a rotation operator into this event and change the orientation to align to target and then down under custom data channel, select channel target. So the set target operator can be executed a single time, like on event entry for instance, and it'll keep the target unless the particle is deleted or unless you do something to give it a new target. But in this case, there are no particles on group one on frame zero when this set target is executed. And there are different things I could do, but in this case, I'm going to set the timing to continuous so that it executes on every frame. And then when a particle is born, it can be targeted. And then on the rotation, I can also change the timing to continuous. It's kind of bouncing around there. There's two things going on. One is the interpolation can be reduced on the rotation. And there's also physics forces being applied. The gravity is pulling it down. You can do the same thing as before. Add a force operator in here. Change the strength of one centimeter and that will zero that out. To illustrate what's happening here, I'll add a display data into this event and enable line to target and select the tie flow and enable custom float. So now it's switching to the particle that's closest to it. And because the barrel and shield particle are so close to one another, they'll select the same target. So this is going a little longer than I would like, so I'm going to break this into two videos but I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. You can click the link that's on the screen now for the part two of this video or check the description. As always, if there was any part of it that you didn't understand or you're having problems with, feel free to leave a comment. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day. And until next time, see ya.